Welcome to the second video for Chapter 5, Inventories and Cost of Sales. So we already covered with you the first two items. And now I'm going to talk about LCM, which stands for Lower of Cost of Market. And then very briefly, I will mention the effects of inventory mistakes on financial statements and cover two ratios. So let me go to LCM. Here we go. So LCM, lower of cost or market, sounds quite fancy, but it's very easy to use. So with the first part of the chapter, I told you that GAP allows companies to choose any of the four methods of combination of cost and volume methods. With LCM, there is no choice. GAP requires every company to report inventory at LCM, lower of cost or market, LCM. So look at the example here. The company must report its inventory at market value when the market is lower than cost. So if, for example, and it's consistent with the conservatism principle. So in accounting, if we have two scenarios, one is more optimistic and another one is more pessimistic, we always choose a pessimistic one so that if the company faces financial difficulties, we are prepared for them. Uh, so if I, um, you know, have, for example, bicycles, I'm selling, you know, one type of bicycle and this bicycle, I paid, you know, $100 when I purchased this bicycle. And right now, if I did not sell that bicycle, let me just show you right here for $100. So that's my cost, how much I paid for it. What is my replacement value? What is the replacement cost? So market is defined as how much would I have to pay for the same bicycle if I bought it now? So if I have to pay right now $120, I look at it and I can see that my cost is lower than market. So we have to use LCM, lower of cost or market. So my cost is below market, so I don't have to make any changes. My inventory is reported at $100. But if, however, something happened, and I, you know, I bought it, the bicycle for $100, but right now the same bicycle I can buy for $85, then I have to make an adjustment. I have to record at lower of cost or market. Market is lower, right? Since market is lower, I have to make an adjustment. I have to actually adjust my inventory down by $15. I'm going to debit cost of goods sold. Even though it's not sold, I'm losing this 50 bucks, 15 bucks. And I'm going to credit merchandise inventory by $15. So it goes from 100 to 85. So since the companies have to do it, that's why sometimes they are willing to sell their items. Like I can sell this item even below cost, sometimes at the end of the period. So if I can sell it for $95, I will lose $5, right? But I would have to, you know, adjust it anyway by, you know, $15. So it's better to lose $5 than $15. So I hope it makes sense. By the way, this system can be applied in three different ways. So as I said, you know, do you have to use LCM? Yes. But how you apply it, and you actually don't even disclose it, is up to you. You can apply it separately to each item or to major categories or to the whole inventory. Let me show you an example. <clears throat> so we have four types of bicycles. This is their number of units. This is their cost. This is their replacement value market. And so if I go item by item, right? So I go roadsters. So look at the LCM lower cost or market. Do I have to adjust it? Yes. By how much? I have to adjust it by 20,000, right? LCM, 50, 60, no adjustment. L LCM, item by item, 40 by 52, I don't have to adjust. 45 by 35, yes, I have to adjust by $10,000. So if I am going to use item by item, then I would have to adjust my adjustment would be right here, uh, $30,000, right? Let me go back right here for a second. So I would really lose $30,000. If I go by major categories of assets, so again, I go by each category, oops, sorry. 
So I just look at the category. 210 versus 200,000. Do I have to adjust? Yes. How much? $10,000. Second category, subtotal. Do I have to adjust? No. Lower of cost to market. So then if I'm going by individual, by uh, major categories, I'm only going to lose $10,000. And what if I go by the whole inventory? So right here, look at the whole inventory. 295, 287. Do I have to adjust? Yes, but how much? $8,000. So what's the most, appro the best method, the best uh, application of LCM that I have to use? It would be uh, to use the whole inventory because my net income then will be decreased only by $8,000. Okay, so I hope it makes sense. This is LCM. Uh, and the slides show what I already explained. Now, this topic is gets, can get a little bit more difficult. I think it belongs to like next to level, like in the intermediate accounting course. Uh, what if we make mistakes? So I will not ask you much of this to do on the test. There is one homework problem. You might have a multiple choice. Just follow this pattern. So if my mistake is where end, the engine inventory is too low, I made a mistake. It should be higher. It's understated then my income statement items will be impacted for two years. So look at this. If my engine inventory is too low, COX will be too high, net income will be too low, and the second year it reverses. Then COX is too low and net income is too high. So if I don't touch it for two years, it will correct itself. And vice versa, if the engine inventory by mistake was overstated, then follow this pattern right here. Guys, the balance sheet items, which is your assets and equity, will be impacted only for one year. If the engine inventory is too low, too low, of course, assets will be too low and equity will be too low because of net income and vice versa. So don't worry too much about this. Just follow the pattern when you ask questions on this, uh, on this topic. And guys, I'm going to finish with the two ratios. In general, they're looking at the same thing at the activity, how efficient is management in selling inventory. Overall, like a rule of thumb, we do want inventory to be liquid and to be sold as quickly as possible because inventory ties up cash, you know, and if the inventory is moving slowly, we're not returning our cash quickly enough. I mean, we have to be careful if inventory is sold too quickly, it might mean that we run out of items and customers might leave us and go to our competitors. The ratios here are pretty much the same. They're just flipped over. So I want, this is the rule I want you to remember, turnover to be high and number of days of sales and inventory. This, this shows to you how many days. If I do not buy any more inventory, how many days can I sustain my sales? You know, it's the way to think about if I don't go to the grocery store, and I use the food I have in the house, how many days can I survive? So I want days of sales to be lower because if it's too many days, it means I have too much inventory and I'm not returning uh, on my investment fast enough. So the inventory turnover, here is the formula, COX divided by average. This is a problem for some students to calculate average. Whenever you see average, calculate that first. Go to the denominator. So what is the average inventory? It's the current year plus previous year. Beginning inventory, that's last year's engine inventory. So you take inventory from last year plus in inventory from this year plus and divide by two. Average, plug it in, take COX. So this formula combines the income statement and the balance sheet. Again, I want turnover to be high. Look what I do for the day sales and inventory. I pretty much flip it over. So now I take inventory at the top. The only difference, we're not using average. We just use current periods. And we divide by Cox and multiply by 365 days. So this concludes chapter five. Thank you.